Good evening, familia. This is Ray Collazo, and thank you for joining us at our 2020 year-end celebration here on the Founding Translation Talk Show. And uh, as many of the episodes have been in the second half of the year, the Founding Translation Blown by Life crossover edition. Joining us is the host, Ray Collazo. Thank you so much. I'm the, proud to say uh, I've been podcasting for over seven years uh, with the Founding Translation brand, um, the longest-running independent Latino-led news talk variety uh, talk show in the podcast platform and now on these live video uh, platforms as well as a radio program at 106.5 FM WPPMLP in Philadelphia, the city that loves you back. Philly's always in the house. And sure that we mentioned this segment for Puerto Rico and the Puerto Rican nation. No importa from Rochester, San Diego, Miami. And you know, and for all those reasons, because Puerto Ricans do for everybody. So this isn't about it being inclusionary. We support all the causes and all the, you know, and Vanessa's involved in a million things. Um, but this this moment, I wanted to help close the show with that thought because we're with our people and who are going through all kinds of challenges for all sorts of reasons. Um, and Frankie, you helped us wrap up the sentiment of the spirit of this show in such a beautiful way. Uh, your, your segue was perfect. I mean, us as a Puerto Rican culture, which is one of the things that I want to make, make clear, is that we are multi-ethnic. We are multicultural. We people that have met you over the years. First of all, I started as a fan. When you when you came out in the scene, that's when that was really such a our generation contributing to the culture and history of salsa was so important to me. And you know, you were such a big part of that. And then to meet you and find out you're a real person and you're a class act in every way, and actually then really care about things that we connected on on that level around society and the world. So you've been such a great representation. I remember when you went on. Christina's show as a young guy and our, you know, most of the Eurekas, you know, we speak Spanish, but not that good. And they were floored how good your Spanish was. World, you got, you got Joe Budden, you got Nori, Nori, Nori. Nori. Okay. in Miami. Yeah. La gente no sabe you know, I love you for that, Ray, because you're just as much hip hop as you are Latin. And, and going into 2020, we thought the biggest issue was going to be that we were going to cover here on Found Translation Mobile Live was going to be the 2020 elections. I personally went to Las Vegas to cover the Nevada caucus. We had some very provocative conversations about what the primary Democratic primary went for the Latino community. Uh, even some discussion, uh, kind of bomba life flavor about what it meant to the Puerto Rican vote in communities like Florida and Pennsylvania, which came into play quite a bit during the general election. So let's check out some of our 20, 2020 Democratic primary coverage. It was critical that Vice President Biden not only win South Carolina, but get a big victory, put a big number on the board to look viable, and not only just win a race and look like he can win something, but also to to really show that he is sort of the singular figure left in his primary that has the has the support in the in black community. And I think he did even better than he expected. It's clear that at least in South Carolina, the black electorate did just not see a viable alternative. Whether that's a viable alternative that they had a connection with, generally liked, or they saw a viable alternative that could potentially be Trump in November, because it's pretty clear from the black electorate throughout the country and South Carolina is no different than electability and someone that can defeat this menace to our country and particularly to people of color is the number one priority for the black community. So he can't, he really can't expect to be able to ride, you know, Obama's coattail uh, so easily with, with the Latino community, right? Um, the Latino community doesn't forget that under the Obama administration, there were more deportations than any other modern day administration. So, um, no, and you the know, Promesa board occurred under the Obama administration. And, and the Promesa board, right? I don't know so, la economía de Puerto Rico. So. Exactly. And so we, we need to, I believe that we need to support Biden as a community. Absolutely. So, but he no, needs to earn it. No question. After the Democratic primary was decided March 2nd, we needed to take a break from the politics, a little something. I mean, you know, it never goes away. But we had to do a little something, something. And quickly, it became apparent that our seven-year anniversary of Founded Translation Talk Show was coming up in April. And I wanted to do very something very special for y'all. Like, honestly, I was just thinking here that like, Rafael Colas was officially like the uh, Puerto Rican Simon Cowell, because all we got is just calling up in the trees. <laughs> banger after banger after banger. After banger. Oh, yes, Weba. That was beautiful. Coder. 
Thank you. Now I feel like you're the Don Francisco uh, radio, like Salvador Gigante with all the... You know, he's a little creepy, people. but we'll, we'll find a better analogy. The good, the good, happy, yes, fine, yes, the yes, talented yes. part. Yes. But Coño, yo tengo que hacer compra. Tú te tienes que hacer compra, pero vete de esta línea ya, porque yo no tengo tiempo para esto. No me pongo en fuego, no. So I was like, oh, damn. And then, of course, I got another lady behind him grabbing words like, oh, no, girl, you got to hurry up and get out of this line. <laughs> This is for the poets and their impossibly blank pages for the potential of youth and verse to turn rage to hope. But mostly this is for those that say no, not today. As the spring evolved, we quickly realized that we wanted to take a deeper dive into an issue that had become apparent that was going to be an acute issue as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic relating to our youth. And that was the issue of, which is a dominant issue in our community, especially with our parents and our young people and our children, which is the issue of autism. It's one of the things that we were challenged with is we had a principal, as nice as he was, was more concerned about his test scores and was making recommendations that we put one of our twins. You see, you see, you see the Puerto Ricans are nodding their heads because we've gone through this. <laughs> because the dirty little secret, look, yeah, my, son, my son's ADD, but the dirty little secret about schools and school systems is mm -hmm. that, well, part that piece, right? Testing and, but it's all right. about you, while you're legally, and you brought this up on your Facebook for money and L about the IEPs, right? Mm -hmm. Legally, they have the resources to do the support for your children, but that's it's a budgetary question because if they utilize those resources for your kid, that's less money they got for other things. So you constantly, right. even in the best case scenario, you have to advocate for your kids. As June approached, it became very clear to our community here that we were going to be missing out from a Puerto Rican perspective on a whole lot. You know, the New York Puerto Rican Parade for <laughs> was not going to take place for the first time, I don't know, 60 plus years. And we had this idea here. So, you know what? Let's take this opportunity, this moment in time, maybe this singular moment in time, when we cannot physically meet together in any sub, you know, real way, the way we know how to do, right? And let's do a virtual Puerto Rican celebration, not just like shaking our booties and waving flags, which, you know, nothing wrong with that. But it really honors the talent, character, and perseverance of the Puerto Rican community. So Bomba Live was born. Bring the legendary uh, family to the table. We were very blessed here at Bomba Live to have the opportunity of presenting this next award, honoree, uh, together with the Roberto Clemente Foundation. And of course, leading that effort is Luis Clemente. Luis Clemente, welcome to Bomba Live. Thank you. Saludos, Ray y Eli. Uh, how you guys doing? Oh, yeah. we're, doing, we're doing wonderful. So, uh, Luis, we're very honored because this is a historic moment in the Puerto Rican community because uh, there are many awards, playgrounds, parques, schools, rightfully so, um, named after your wonderful father, the iconic Roberto Clemente. But this is a moment we're going to take to honor another icon in our community, the matriarch of the Puerto Rican community, the matriarch of the Pittsburgh Pirates, La Madrina de, de la Pelota, your dear mother, Doña Vera Clemente. Yes, um, I'm, I'm exactly really, really honored and very proud of what mom accomplished. And I, I really thank you, you know, for creating this award to her name because. Hey, how are you guys? Saludos, Saludo, Bernie. All right. Saludo. I, I, Saludo, I, I, Bernie. Bernie, Ellie, Ellie is just, uh, Ellie is having so much patience because he's so excited about this. Ellie, I just want to give you a moment to talk to your hero. Bernie Williams, Elliot. The stage is yours, brother. I know you're excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had the, the honor of meeting Bernie uh, at the barbershop. We share the same barber in, in uh, New York. Um, it's been a great celebration of the character of our community. And the reason we wanted to bring uh, honor Doña Vera Clemente is that she was the embodiment of Puerto Rican character. As, you know, raising these wonderful uh, men that she, she raised 
and carrying on the, her husband's legacy. Bernie, uh, any final words to La Gente de Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rican community that, that loves you, whether they're on the island or New Yorkers, there are Yankee fanatics, or just Puerto Ricans that understand your character and, uh, and your accomplishment. Just any words you have for our community here in 2020? Yeah, I, I want to you know, express my, my gratitude to the Clemente uh, Family Foundation, uh, Bomba Live, for giving me uh, this honor to just, you know, for mentioning me. Post Bomba Live, as the sum, our festive summer continued, it became clear that Fountain Translation and the Bomba Live crossover episodes were really becoming a home where people wanted to have these conversations, what was going on in the street, what people were talking about, the latest Netflix show, um, the passing of an incredible icon, um, just big news that was going on with celebrities and entertainers and thought leaders in our community. So whether it was conversations about what the legendary what the Mercado meant to our community, an interview with a hot reggaetonero like Rafa Babon, or just like conversations about what was going on in the street with IG celebrities, memes, uh, conversation, new hot news, cheese that was going on. People were talking about it on Bomba Life. Lima, was it worth the wait? Talk to us about oh my God. your emotions. Oh my God. Come on. So they were probably like, Shh, everybody be quiet. I got to watch this. Right, right, right. Like those was on for just a few minutes and, and the house went still. I, I will say this. And, and y, y, como Boricua, voy a hablar. Si él dijo que te pusiera unos panties verdes, te los ponía y tú no preguntaba. <laughs> Puerto Ricans like to think of Walter's kind of the epitome of Puerto Ricans, right? The dramatic, the, the the style. Much of this was really Walter influencing Puerto Ricans and how much of it was him being our vessel to the world. So Bad Bunny is not just like the best in the game, but he's changing the game. Because what I think, to your point, Tanya, what this album is doing, his new music is doing, is maturing his audience and we're, he's pushing us to go along on his personal journey and his artistic journey. So y'all need to catch up. And I think of as the leaves started to fall, kids going back to school, well, at least on their laptops, not going back to school. You know what I mean? Got a little chillier. We had to turn our sights to what else? The 2020 elections. In fact, this is the biggest election of our lifetime bar none. I know that that's said every year, Ralph, but well, this year is different. It's not just about the direction of our country. It's about whether we are going to have a democracy or we are leading to an authoritarian state. Which year? And I get these texts from friends, family, um, a lot of, uh, you know, DMs. Hey, Ray, what's going to happen? Are the polls right? Are they going to steal this? Are we really going to win? I'm so scared. And let me tell you something. You know, I think the polling that we're seeing, and of course, nobody believes that's 100% accurate. But the fact that we're in this position electorally, I think we should all understand that didn't just happen because Trump's a bad person or Biden's a fantastic candidate. It happened because not only the work that's happened this year to engage communities like Vanessa does that oftentimes don't get the preferred candidate they want in these, in these cycles, or rarely do, frankly, but they persist to come on to continue to build the movement. But this is also, and I'm thinking about places like Arizona and even in Florida, we're talking about get decades plus activism that's led us to this moment where we can feel like we have a very strong opportunity to win this election. I can't take the anxiety away from you because I have it too. Hey, in this time period, I'm gonna keep it real. I've had two health issues, the spells in the last six months and partially the pandemic, of course, or partially stressing about this whole situation. Be honest about it. I don't care because I know what's happening and, and how much this, these people can continue to hurt all of us on some level as they do with their no importa about a pandemic that kills a thousand people, Americans a day. But the thing I can tell you is that these four, next 48 hours are the most important 48 hours of the last four years because who's voted is voted. Can't do nothing about that. And that's probably generally positive for us, that situation. But in the next 48 hours, instead of focusing on what could happen, what may happen, what if the guy wins, oh my God, what if they cheat, the, main, the next two days of your life, what you need to do to get that stress off you is focus on what you can do. Because some of these things we cannot control at the end of the day. We'll try, we'll protest, we'll do what we can. But what? focus on what you can do over the next two days. So I know... 
the power of all you people. All I want to do is make sure you're aware that if we do this together, there's nothing we can't do. And that's all I want to do. And, and the other thing is that God didn't give me this brain not to realize, to put two and two together and share it with people que cuando hay falta de respeto. And, and I'm sorry. And, and I, I wish I could do more. And that's why we got to do it together. But nobody's going to disrespect us. We may not win every battle, but you're not going to step over us. So we're going to start with coconut cream. And I'm just jumping right in, guys. We're just because. Oh, yeah. yeah we, need uh, we need the rum. We need the rum. We need the rum. I, jump, I jumped all in 45 minutes. Ago. <laughs> I know. So I'm going to start with the coconut cream. 2020 tells us to be, teach us to be grateful about what we have. Man, hits me in the heart, man, when I think about it. We got to be grateful, fam. Truly, truly grateful what we have. The second thing is I reminded y'all this in the fall and it came from, from a political context. We're starting to see it with the, on the health piece with COVID is that it's always darkest before you see the light. And so I know so many of us, too many of you are dealing with sadness related to COVID and just the end of this year with different tragedies that happened to your lives. And I can't take that pain away from you, fam. I'm with you and you know, with so many of you, I'm in touch with you personally. I'm with you personally because I care about all of you and your families and your loved ones. But all I can say is that it'll get better. And there'll be a let you'll learn you'll get lessons out of these moments. That'll make you stronger. And for those that left us, they left us with their strength to carry on. They wouldn't want us to, to wallow in it. They would want us to carry on to build on their legacies. Because they left some incredible legacies. There's no question about it. And then the last thing is that if 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 this year didn't teach you the power of leadership with yourself, you know, part of the issue that we've highlighted here is that part of the reason we're in this mess on many levels in this country is that it's unfortunately there's a whole lot of followers out there. And on some level, they teach us a lot of people in the high end business world and the high end political leadership kind of like it that way, kind of like us being followers and being satisfied being followers. But if you get nothing out of this experience, family, here listening to to me and my crew is they got to be a leader 